Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General Manager, Microsoft Mexico, Jorge Silva. Buenos días. Muy buenos días para todos y bienvenidos. Qué bueno tenerlos acá en este Summit, en este Microsoft Tech Summit. La verdad que muy contentos de tenerlos a todos por acá. Una audiencia muy importante para nosotros. Son todos ustedes los que están en este momento tomando decisiones cruciales de cómo ayudar a sus compañías o como desarrolladores, cómo seguir desarrollando propiedad intelectual para esta etapa en la que nos encontramos. Y hemos diseñado, eh, antes quiero saludar eh, a los que nos están viendo vía streaming, estamos transmitiendo a toda América Latina vía streaming, entonces un saludo especial a todos ellos que nos están siguiendo. Tenemos un evento muy importante, muy interesante para todos ustedes. Hemos preparado un evento eh, realmente pensando en la re retroalimentación que ustedes nos han dado. De hecho, eh, en esta nube de palabras, vemos algunas de las palabras que reiteradamente ustedes ponen en su retroalimentación. Y es por eso, por eso que hemos diseñado un evento en donde ustedes van a encontrar más de 80 sesiones, más de 60 laboratorios en donde van a poder profundizar en los temas que todos nosotros estamos en este momento eh, teniendo en, en nuestras agendas. ¿no? Realmente eh, el tema de la transformación eh, digital y de la, y de la revolución, de la cuarta revolución industrial en la que ya estamos, que es un hecho, se convierte en la prioridad que tenemos todos nosotros. Realmente es difícil ser competitivos si, si realmente no emprendemos un plan para transformarnos digitalmente. Muy rápidamente quiero mencionar eh, lo que yo sé que todos ustedes están pensando. Los, los CEOs, alrededor del 86% de los CEOs tienen en este momento como... El 86% de los CEOs tienen como prioridad la tecnología. Esa es la prioridad. Esa es la prioridad por encima de otros trenes mundiales, como los niveles demográficos, el tiempo de cambio, pero el tema que tienen en sus cabezas es la transformación digital, la digital transformación, porque se vuelven competitivos. And there are different topics we have to focus on as professionals of technology, as developers, like advising the companies to go forward with their path towards digital transformation. So how can we be closer to our customers? Remember that industrial revolution is going to take away all barriers from entry and exit, and then this is going to make us make them become our customers. So we have to also help our employees. We have to empower our employees so that they can make decisions fast. And they have to be agile, especially taking into account information that is needed to make decisions. Do not forget that the most important characteristic for the Industrial Revolution is that data is the equivalent to electricity, electric power. So that is a whole new world for us. So we are empowering the employees. We are optimizing our operations. And basically, entrepreneurs, we are really much uh, focused on trying to do more with less, and that is what we are focused on in this strategy of optimizing operations. But we have to go beyond. So the final objective is that we keep being competitive, agile, and fast, and generating new products and services based in information data and this international digital revolution. So we want to know how to respond to the market in an um, agile and speed manner. It is important for me as general director of Microsoft in Mexico to mention that this is a great chance because we have been here in Mexico for 30 years already. It's not just about a commercial topic. It's also about technology innovating and investing $12 billion dollars a year in terms of technology and also working for Mexico, uh, covering the needs of the country and the opportunities that it, we get in, from this uh, work. So we are also committed to the vulnerable populations with many, many front lines we're working on. So more here, I'm going to mention more in detail, but I would like to invite you to watch a video of these 30 years of Microsoft in Mexico.
¿Alguna vez te has Have you ever wondered what technology is and what effect it can have in the lives of people? What are the stories that Microsoft Mexico has to tell? Who are the people that make it all possible? Just more than a little bit more than 40 years, 40 years ago, Bill Gates started a new company that was called Microsoft. They were very ambitious in each desktop they they needed to have a computer. And 11 years later, in 1986, Microsoft opened their first office in Mexico and providing technology for all Mexicans. Also. enabling people and we are creating benefits. 1986, a group of five people became uh, the leaders of the office in Mexico City after participating here in all the development of the offices. We also have Microsoft Windows, which has an operating system. and being able to just click in just one occasion. Also, we had an exponential growth. And this made this the best technology. We were able to grow and to grow our offices as well. For 1988, we hired our first general director, and it became a, a national company also for the following years microsoft mexico became more integrated with more applications for people in 2007 we started our work culture and we started growing our offices and changing the way we were working collaborating our solutions uh, supply also increased and thanks to our collaborators and our claims, we were able to cover the needs through our technology. So Mexico is essential for Microsoft throughout these 30 years. We have been going forward and we have Bill Gates, the founder, who supports us. We And we it supports us in favor of competitiveness and um, and we are also promoting other uh, charity initiatives. We have the technology center as well that generates millions of dollars per year and we are in charge of making, um, creating awareness of what we do through our programs. We want the public to know what we do through innovation. It is incredible what we have reached so far with technology, IT, and we are very proud of the, uh, of the role that Microsoft has taken here in this country. So today, we are working on mobility, connectivity, and other tools in order to develop, to be competitive, and to be productive. We are providing the necessary tools for everybody to succeed. And in Mexico, we are applying the most innovative solutions and with a team that is integrated by the most professional and experts, and we have a commitment through technology. Today, Microsoft Mexico is looking towards the future, a world in which each Mexican, each institution is gonna be able to do more thanks to Microsoft and we are going to be supported by our whole career here in Mexico. I'm going to tell you the story that we have technology, we have projects with you and your companies, but sometimes we don't tell the story of the impact that we have in this country. 
So we have a whole plan to work in different front lines, which is economic development, youth, education, opportunities for youngsters, and for the most more vulnerable populations. More than 2,000 organizations of the civil society have been benefited with training, education. They have been given software so that they can have a company or a business criteria and it to have more impact. We work in more than 400 technology centers together with Incubi in order to provide access to technology to the youngsters and to train them and to have and to give them opportunities. I, I say this very frequently because this is the uh, the uh, universal lever, that is technology. We have an immense, an enormous potential. We work with more than 4 million small and medium enterprises which make the country more competitive. And with this we can become much more productive. So basically 30 years committed with the country, with society, with Mexicans. And we hope this is just the beginning of our relationship many, many years now and long term where we can impact the lives of Mexicans. Now I would like to tell you that we feel honored and very happy to have such an important visit here in Mexico to this great event in this tech summit in Mexico. We have Catherine Boger, who is the general director of Microsoft Office Marketing, and I would like to invite her to address some words to the audience and to tell you all about Office also. My aspiration is that after this event, you will be able to make faster decisions. So we will get in depth with many, many other topics. Catherine, thank you very much. And this is the floor for you. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you very Good much. morning. It's so lovely to be here in Mexico City and represent Microsoft. On behalf of all of Microsoft employees across the world, welcome to the Tech Summit. It's really my honor to be here to kick off this event. For the next 60 minutes, I'll provide an overview of the work we are doing across our full portfolio of products and share some of the success stories we're seeing from our customers around the world. And we're truly excited and honored today to be joined by a local customer, Alejandro Reyes from Gran Portorario, who will tell, talk about his personal story with the Microsoft Cloud. Our goal for the event is really for all of you to leave here with a better understanding of our vision and some of the innovation that we are making to help you and you in your business and in your career. So let's start with the Microsoft mission. Our mission at Microsoft is to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. This is no small mission, but we are very convicted to it. And empowerment is truly the core to everything we do. And today at this Tech Summit for the next two days, we are going to focus on the work we are doing at Microsoft to enable you to use our technologies to deliver amazing solutions for your teams and organizations. We rally, at Microsoft, we rally across three core ambitions. To deliver solutions that enable even more personal computing, to re deliver solutions that enable you to re reinvent productivity and business processes, and to take advantage of the intelligent cloud platform and deliver solutions that build off this really amazing platform. As IT pros and developers, you are at the center of one of the biggest transformations the technology industry has ever seen. And you have the opportunity to deliver transformational impact to your companies and to yourselves. It is our use of our technologies and products that turn our work into real transformational business impact across organizations. And truly, a key driver of that transformation is the cloud. The cloud is a generational shift in computing, and it represents major changes for everyone across the world. Microsoft included. 
And every organization over the next few years is going to need a strategy for how they move from where they are today to how they are going to take maximum advantage of what the cloud can offer. Organizations will look to adopt new cloud-based productivity and business app solutions that enable employees to be even more successful and to reinvent business processes. They will also build new applications that enable them to better engage with their customers and optimize the running of their businesses. With this in place, they can take advantage of the new data and intelligence technologies, machine learning, advanced analytics, and IoT to unlock new insights about their data and enable intelligent action from it. And with all of these services and applications running in the cloud, this requires a new approach to security and manageability. The Microsoft Cloud is truly unique in that it delivers across all of these scenarios. No other company offers the breadth and the depth of what the Microsoft Cloud can deliver. And we deliver all of this with a global, trusted, and hybrid promise that is truly differentiated in the industry. The Microsoft Cloud is a globally scaled cloud platform. And over the last several years, we've been hard at work expanding it to run all over the world. The circles on this map are Azure regions, which are made up of clusters of data centers where you can run and deploy your apps and solutions. We now have 36 unique Azure regions around the world. And that is twice as many choices in locations and countries as AWS. This enables you to run your applications and solutions closer to your customers, your employees than ever before, and to compete in even more geographic markets. But what truly makes each of these regions really impressive is the sheer size of them. We are continually building out and activating new data centers to expand the capacity of all of our regions. And so I thought what would be really fun is to give you a quick glimpse behind the scenes at our data centers. Please roll the video. So that gives you a bit of a view into how we take our data center strategy and, and what that looks like. And the Microsoft Cloud is really optimized for businesses and enterprises. For us, enterprises are not an afterthought. They are a critical design point across all of our teams. And it's not just about technology. At Microsoft, we have decades of experience supporting businesses and enterprise customers of all sizes. We have 30 years of experience right here in Mexico. This means we really understand the critical requirements of running software for businesses, including certifications, data sovereignty, security, and privacy. In fact, 
the Microsoft Cloud has more compliance certifications than any other cloud vendor. The Microsoft Cloud is also the only global public cloud vendor licensed to operate legally in China and the only to offer full data sovereignty in Germany with our data trustee model. But we also know that all of our customers need to take advantage of the IT investments they've already made and use it in conjunction with the cloud. So at Microsoft, we're the only technology company delivering a complete hybrid cloud solution. This is important because hybrid cloud isn't a trend or a buzzword. It's the reality for every company. And we deeply understand this reality more so than any other vendor. We are the only vendor on the planet with both deep on-premises experience and globally scaled public cloud offerings that span the entire technology stack. Hybrid does not just mean connectivity between your on-premises data centers and a public cloud. Real hybrid means consistency across your entire technology estate. And hybrid consistency doesn't just mean infrastructure. We know that no company only has infrastructure. That is why at Microsoft, we've invested in hybrid consistency across the entire stack, which in turn gives you maximum flexibility as you journey to take advantage of cloud-based solutions. And it enables you to use a common set of skills and tools along the way. All of these combined capabilities are leading to tremendous adoption of the Microsoft Cloud right now, today. 85% of Fortune 500 companies are now running their businesses using the Microsoft Cloud. In fact, over 60% of them are using more than three of our cloud offerings. We're also adding 120,000 new Azure subscriptions each month. These are just a handful of our customers running on our Microsoft Cloud today. But as I mentioned earlier, we thought you'd like to hear from someone closer to home. So I'm very excited to have Alejandro Reyes from Gran Portuaria join us today. And please welcome Jorge back to the stage and Alejandro, and they'll talk about Gran Portuaria's journey to the cloud. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, Alejandro, I would like to thank you because it's great for our audience to hear from the uh, evidence of someone that is basically the testimonial, someone that has great experience, and I'm sure that you're going to be able and you want to hear from. What are you doing, in Grand Portuaria? Grand Portuaria in 1990 is a logistics company, has two areas transportation cargo, transportation area in which we work with customers of international level like Unilever who makes Home Depot and the other area is new cars transportation. In that area we work together with Nissan, Volkswagen and also Hyundai. I am the, the IT director of Gran Portuaria. And we have, I have a great responsibility because our industry is more competitive every day. We need to improve our times and the supply chain is becoming much, much more agile. So we need to keep pushing the company and just going forward with new products and new technology. I always say my, my customers, doesn't matter where we come from, which, which in industry we come from. We all have an Uber that follow us and that is going to create a lot of disruption in our companies. So we got to keep moving because we have been working for more than four years in this digital transformation of the company, right? Tell us a little bit about this. 
Yeah, until 2013, Grand Portuaria was part of a group of TM um, group. And we were working with a traditional setup of hosting with a data center with some um, facilities. But also what we did in this split and this new company is that we made the decision to migrate because it was the right moment in order to migrate our whole Azure infrastructure. The tests were run for three or six months, actually, because three years ago, it was, I was feeling a little bit uncertain on handling such a setup or a scheme of dedicated links, etc., of everything that is very much in control to a much more simpler open system. It was just with just one internet connection it could work. So that is the way it was. And after many tests, well, we migrated to Azure three years ago in 2013. So tell us a little bit about the benefits here. You were talking about what we're doing with Internet of Things, and also I do handle a lot of logistics. So tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, we started digital transformation with the infrastructure of Azure by assembling servers, apps, and seeing how this infrastructure is robust and flexible. And throughout these three years, we have seen how this platform has grown by launching new products, by launching new uh, services. And we are right now in a moment in which basically last week we started, we enabled the Azure Hub. We empower the uh, operators which is basically most of our employees, in which with a smartphone, now they have an app in which we see all the events that take place in terms of logistics from what time they leave, what time they come, at what time they we start loading, unloading, etc. All those indicators actually are going to help us a lot to turn with the client and tell them, look, you are telling me to come to a certain hour, right, uh, to a certain date, but for me to start um, accumulating miles, I mean, that's going to take hours, so we have indicators that we check every month with our customers, and we can also turn around and say, look, you have an opportunity here in the ramp with the etc. So that feedback is something that we can generate with the customer. So yeah, two of the things that you were mentioning at the beginning, I have to do a lot with the customer and empowering the employees with all different front lines of digital transformation. Just out of curiosity, what this application was about, well, the database, it's a server. As a servers, of course you have some fans, I guess. But now we have, of course, you're gonna have to give your your a picture with all of them. You're gonna have to take a picture with all your fans. So there are barriers, there are difficulties that have to do with the infrastructure that you have. It depends on the bandwidth and the topology, the network. So please tell, tell them a little bit about the challenges that you had and that you found throughout the process. Yeah, we started out with a hybrid cloud in which our facilities, there will change. Well, we changed the dedicated uh, links to internet connections. Unfortunately, given our area, there are not many mm, vendors where we have a good internet service, internet connection service. We now are we are now re generating redundancy. We lost um, connection with the cloud, so. There was no entity to validate users. So we started working on that for three years. And then nowadays the platform is much more stable. 
and especially in the topic of a simple internet connection where you can have access to indicators to everything. So all those data that we are just starting to to obtain with our operators, we are going to present it in a dashboard to the operation managers with Power BI. We and have information in time also and shape for a timely decision making. You have unit and um, return units depending of the hours of driving. So I guess this audience wouldn't um, forgive me if I don't ask you which um, suggestions do you have. Well, depending on the industry, the best advice that I can actually give you is to start digital transformation. I know there are certain matters there, for example, sometimes um, we don't know how to start or how to sell to the high management this type of uh, matters, but um, according to this industry, it is the era of digital transformation. So otherwise, then it's going to be too late. So those that are in technology and now they are working in a project of one year, right? If you're going to have, you need a lot of development, interactive development in order to get results. Actually, what we are trying to start with is to, we want to have results very, very soon. We want to have top 90 days for results. Because this is not an IT project. The digital transformation is a business-wise business, business -wise transformation. We have to be completely aligned with a very clear objective. And in order to provide continuity to the, uh, to the matter, for this matter, we have to get results very soon. So the active participation is very important. Great. So thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you for giving us your opinions and share, sharing your experience. You can count on Microsoft. And now we are just concerned about the success of our customers. So we hope you can grow much more success in the following years. Thank you very much for inviting me to this forum. And I am at your service. Let's give a round of applause to him. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing story. Not only about how Alejandro and team use so much of the Microsoft uh, technology, but the advice around starting your digital transformation now. Um, Alejandro shared a lot of use around Azure and Power BI to empower the people who run the, the truck drivers, the people who are driving the trucks every day to give them the information they need to be more effective. Very exciting to hear about that. So with all of the talk about Azure, I thought I'd switch gears and start really um, telling you how, how we look at Azure and how we think about breaking it down and using it in new scenarios. Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing platform and is the foundation of really all of our Microsoft cloud offerings. You can use Azure for core infrastructure, and you heard some examples of that and really just use it for, for base compute, storage, and virtual machines. Take on some of those smaller projects they talked about. But you can also take advantage of platform services and benefit from reduced management overhead and cloud native scale. Our cl cloud platform, tool, the platform and tools together deliver unmatched productivity and enable customers to move faster and be even more successful. Both the Cap core Azure Core Infrastructure and the Azure Platform Service are open and support the ability to target multiple devices, use multiple operating systems, programming languages, and tools. This slide highlights just a few of the technologies that you can use to build Azure solutions with today. With Azure, customers can use the best of the Windows ecosystem and the best of the Linux ecosystem together to build truly amazing solutions. 
As we talked about, many customers start with the core infrastructure. And here are just a few examples of what some of our customers worldwide have been doing. Esri delivers geospatial solutions. They use Azure with tens of thousands of databases. Rockwell Automation is running SAP HANA, which is super memory intensive, and they're doing all of this on Azure. And ChronoDrive is a large retailer, and they're using fast storage for their SQL databases. And they've cut their accounting times in half to less than one millisecond. But as you start to run more apps and infrastructure in the cloud, manageability across multiple environments becomes truly critical. You'll likely start by running workloads both in Azure as well as on-premises with existing bare metal servers or VMware or Hyper-V-based virtualization environments. Our management and security solutions now enable you to easily manage your VMs, your servers and apps in this hybrid world. We provide an integrated solution that enables log analytics, automation, backup, disaster recovery and data protection, as well, of course, as integrated security analysis and reporting. But you don't want just to hear me talk about it. You want to see some of this technology in action, right? So please help me in welcoming Victor to the stage, who's going to demonstrate some of these new hybrid management and security capabilities. Gracias, Catherine. Welcome, Victor. Hola, México. Buenos días. Espero se encuentren muy bien. And in this demo, I will show you some of the very powerful capabilities that we are delivering built in, into Azure to help you manage and secure your hybrid cloud environments. For this, I'm going to start with the Azure Management Portal that you see here on the screen. From here, I can manage all my Azure resources that are located all around the world. And with so many services available at my fingertips, I can simply deploy applications or workloads that I need wherever I need them. Take here, for example, that I have deployed several applications that are running on Linux and Windows, and they are located in different regions across the world. Now, this could bring a challenge, right? Because with so many resources running all around the world, I need an easy way to manage and monitor them, no matter where they are. At, Ash, at Microsoft Ignite, we announced Azure Monitor. This is a new feature or capability that, in, that make is, makes monitoring built in and accessible for all our Azure users. From here, I have a single view of all the resources and telemetry, such as, for example, metrics on alerts. And having all the metrics and resources in one single place provides an amazing experience. Why? Because this can help me to pinpoint issues faster than ever before. Let's see this in action with one example. So I'm going to start by selecting my right Azure subscription. Then I'm going to select this resource group. And I'm going to select the application that I'm looking for. As you can see here, I, can, I have several metrics available that I can use for my, for my, for my analysis. I will, I will pick a couple of them. I will chart them. And also, I will select the specific results. And I can even attach alerts to this. In this way, if something unexpected happened, I will be instantly notified. And let's take a look at this. Here, you can provide your email, and you can provide the information so that you can receive the alerts directly delivered right to you. OK. But also, there are many times where I want deeper information about my Azure resources. And if I have a hybrid cloud, then I will have even more resources. Then I, get, I need great tools for great insights, data correlation, and data analysis. But also, and to be fair, it is not just about managing Azure resources, right? Because most likely you have resources on premises, for example, running on Hyper-V and VMware, as well as in the public cloud, for example, in, uh, in, in Azure or AWS. And then for this, we need a unified tool so that it helps us to drill down and get the analysis of our data, no matter where our resources are located. We have a new capability, which is log search. 
With log search, this enables me to run queries and analyze the data across my entire hybrid cloud in a very simple way. Let's take, for example, a very simple query. And let's start just with an asterisk to get all the resources. As you can see here, Azure, in less than a second, returned over 6 million records that are sourced across petabytes of data in just literally under a second. But also, I can easily search this data in order to get more meaningful results. For example, let's group this data for data type. As you can see here, Azure instantly present this information in an easy way that I can understand it. But you can use any type of query to return more meaningful results of your wealth of data. Let me run a more complex query here. And while this runs, basically this query correlates metrics data about, uh, between different SQL Azure databases and elastic pools that are located across many different Azure subscriptions. As you can see here, I can easily verify the, the performance of my databases, and I can right away pinpoint the database that has abnormal usage very, very quickly, and just to admit this less than a second. But in addition to log search and metric data, I can also access many of the out-of-the-box rich solutions and resources with operations management suite. And we can see them here. We have provided so many out-of-the-box rich solutions for common scenarios that we have found our early adopters want to see. For example, one of the most demanded scenarios is patch management, right? For this, we are delivering this solution, which is called update solution. With this integrated solution, I can easily, be, I can easily see in a single place all the patch status of my Windows and Linux servers, no matter where they are. Some of them are running on-premises, some of them are running on the cloud. I can see all the patch information available here in a single dashboard. But now, let's talk about more about security, okay? And for this, I'm going to switch to the new Azure Security Center. From here, Azure is going to present me with a lot of information that will help me to identify vulnerabilities, and detect threats right away from the portal. Let me start first with intelligent security recommendations. Here, this feature enables me to easily to, uh, to identify, prioritize, and remediate vulnerabilities that I have on my system. Let's start with one example. For example, this recommendation, which is add a web application firewall. Azure is going to show me all the applications that will benefit if I deploy a web application firewall to them. So in case I want to remediate this application and protect them, I can right away deploy, for example, a virtual appliance from one of our integrated partners right away from the portal with very few clicks. I'm sure you're familiar with some of these solutions. You can deploy them right away from the portal. But unfortunately, even with the most and the best security in place, attackers will continue to innovate and they will keep targeting organizations with increasingly sophisticated attacks all the time. And then, by continuously collecting and analyzing data, Security Center can identify attacks that might otherwise have come under, uh, under detected. For example, let me switch over to security alerts. And let's take a, a, a view of the alerts that Azure has detected for me. Here, I can see that there was one security incident detected, okay? Let's drill down into this, and let's see what happened. Azure will present to us the information that the attacker took when he was doing or doing malicious activities in our environment. Here, we can see that the attacker first tried to do a SQL injection, but initially that the, the, the attack was blocked. But this was a very persisting attacker, and after several attempts, he was successful with an RDP brute force attack. Azure Security Center provides you this great information right away. Why? Because it uses analytics so that it can, it can analyze the data, pinpoint, and cross-reference for millions of records so that we can see what is happening in our environment. With this, I would like to summarize that what we have just seen. First, we saw how easy it is to access Azure resources all around the world from a single portal. 
Then we saw built-in monitoring that enables the management for resources, no matter where they are. They, maybe they are on the cloud or on premises. Maybe they are Windows or Linux. And also, we saw intelligent security to help, to help keep threats out of your environment. I hope you are as excited as I am with all the possibilities that we have with Azure. Muchas gracias, and back to you, Catherine. Thank you so much, Victor. Now you've actually gotten to see some of our vision on hybrid cloud and the power and flexibility it provides to run infrastructure anywhere. But now let's move up the stack and talk about something that I know is top of mind for many of your organizations. And that's how do you modernize the applications you build to fully leverage this hybrid cloud infrastructure and deliver solutions for this mobile first, cloud first world. Our Visual Studio family now provides a complete set of development tools offerings that enable you to build fantastic mobile-first, cloud-first offerings. And with the latest release of .NET and the introduction of .NET Core, you can now build great container-based microservice solutions. Our new Visual Studio code development tool enables you to build apps in any language, including Java, Node.js, Python, PHP, and more. And it runs not just on Windows, but also Mac and Linux development machines. In fact, both Google and Uber are now starting to standardize on using Visual Studio code internally with many of their development teams. One of the exciting additions to the Visual Studio family this year was the acquisition of Xamarin. Xamarin enables you to build great native mobile applications that run across iOS, Android, and Windows. And Xamarin is now included built into Visual Studio and is available at no extra cost. And when you're building applications, we know that data is a core ingredient. As a developer, you have a rich set of assets to build intelligence applications that are truly powered by data. Taking advantage of capabilities in information management, big data stores, machine learning, and analytics can significantly improve the richness of your apps and turn them into intelligence apps. So now, please join me in welcoming Stuart to show you just how you can do that. Thanks, Stuart. Welcome. Thanks, Catherine. Hello. Uh, so I'd like to take you on a tour through a, uh, an intelligent solution that brings in some of the pieces you've just been hearing around, from data management to analytics to insights and intelligent services. The application is um, built in .NET. Uh, it has a back end and a set of front end applications. And it's called First Response Online. And it's used by first responders in the Sammamish area in the United States. So this is organizations such as police forces, paramedics, fire services, etc. And they'll take the application, which works across Windows as well as iOS and Android through Xamarin, and they'll have that in the vehicle with them as they're going out attending incidents. So if I log into the application here as someone who would be going out on patrol, um, we can see that I've got some context. So I'm the blue dot kind of in the middle here. I can see other incidents around me. I can see other responders that are around me. And I've got a dispatch that's come in for a speeding incident. So I'm going to click on that and accept that dispatch and start navigating and getting directions right beside me in the car to the incident. And as I'm on my way towards that incident, I get a little notification that comes in updating the details for this incident. And this gives me better context when I arrive that this speeding incident has now become a collision. So at the point that I arrive at the scene, I can come there, I can ask the driver of the vehicle what their name is. And it sounded to me like they said Joe. So I come in here and I can type Joe. 
And I can then do a search inside the application. And this is going to bring back not just straight text matches, but matches based on phonetic indexing through the power of Azure Search Service. Looking at the photos that are presented here and comparing it to the driver, I can see that actually it was Jay who was the driver of the vehicle. And I can go ahead and, and process the incident and get on with my day-to-day -day job. So let's take a little look at some of the, the data that's behind this. So if I come into the Azure portal here, you can see a range of SQL databases. And the ISV who built this solution chose to take advantage of the horizontal sharding capabilities of Azure SQL Database. So they've got a database for each of the different services for the incidents for that service. So all of the police incidents are in one database in the same for ambulance and fire. Now, with all of those different databases, they took advantage of the elastic pooling capabilities in Azure SQL Database to allocate resources to a set of databases that then share those resources. And I can come in here in the portal and inspect and see how those resources are being used. And I can then adjust the amount of capacity that those databases have. And in the portal here, I can come in and simply drag this slider along and click Save. And I've now scaled up the capacity that those databases have. Now, for the developers of you in the room, you might look at this and see, well, there's a bunch of databases. When I want to pull back the set of incidents across them all, that's just added more work for me. But if we take a little look, I've got the, uh, the code here for the back end, also written in .NET. And in production, it's deployed to Azure App Service. I've just got it locally running on my machine here. And we're going to just hit the, the back end API to get back all of the incidents. And since yesterday was the 10th anniversary of PowerShell, PowerShell seemed like the most appropriate way to me today to, to call this API. So as we kick that off, we come into a breakpoint in Visual Studio, pulling back the connection details for the database. And then as we drop down into the next breakpoint, we come in to see a familiar pattern for .NET developers, using a database connection and a database command and then pulling back the results. These happen to be uh, provided to us by the Azure SDK, and they're multi-shard aware. So where we've got the set of databases, this command that we run once will actually go off against each of those sharded databases and pull back the set of those results of the queries in one go. And we can see there we've got the, uh, the results coming across a set of different department types. So this is using the power of Azure SQL Database. And actually, this is using the in-memory OLTP capabilities of Azure SQL Database, which gives us some very powerful capabilities. If I sign out of the application here and sign in instead as a supervisor, we can see how we can take advantage of in-memory OLTP to give us up to the second information. So I now have a Power BI dashboard enabled as a supervisor to let me see and gain some analytics around the instance that are occurring. So I can drill in here. I've got a nice map that I can filter down by the different type of incident and see how they vary across location. I can drill in and see further information mined from the instant report. So as we look in here, we can see this word cloud that's generated by the textual searching of the instant reports themselves. And as we can see, intoxication features fairly heavily in there. And as we drill down through these, if we click on these, the linked pieces of the dashboard that's embedded using Power BI embedded, let us see that intoxication, as you probably expect, tends to occur a little bit more later in the day than earlier in the day. And you can use this self-serve analytics to mine further in, and supervisors can dig in to discover further patterns. And this is great. This is powerful. But we can go a step further. We can take the historical incident data, and we can bring that together with other correlated data, such as holiday information and weather information. And we can bring that inside of Azure Machine Learning. And here you can see a Machine Learning Studio workbench where we've got a trained model taking the data in, applying machine learning algorithms, and training a model. And then with a click down at the bottom here, we can deploy a web service to production, taking the effort of producing that trained model and with a couple of clicks having that productionized. So this gives us a model for predicting when and where instances are likely to happen based on historical data. And back in our application, we can display that to the user as a heat map of the region that they're looking at so that supervisors get an idea of where instances are likely to happen and where they might want to deploy those first responders before the instances actually take place. So all of this shows what can be achieved with creating a rich application, an intelligent application, powered by your data, powered by the Azure Cloud, 
and how every one of you developers here in this room can take these capabilities and go away and build differentiated experiences for your customers and users. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stuart. That was a pretty impressive demo, and looking at what, what we can accomplish so quickly, especially in the last five minutes on stage. That was really, truly impressive. Um, I also wanted to share just a few other examples of how our customers are using our pla these platform services. TalkTalk Talk is a telecommunications company, and they built microservices on service fabric to create a high-scale media application. Alaska, recognizing that really people are always on their phone, quickly modernized an employee-facing app and made it available to users wherever they were located in a matter of weeks using Azure App Service and Xamarin. And Genie, an industrial man machines company, had their engineering department quickly create a mobile app using Power Apps and Flow to do quality control. So some real examples of how you can use this technology today. But these types of mobile apps are a great example of how technology is changing the way people work every day. And these new technology changes truly change every aspect of our businesses. They shape growth, they change our industry landscapes, and they provide great new opportunities for new business models. But along with these amazing opportunities, there are some serious challenges that companies have to overcome. For example, today, employees work on nearly two times the number of teams that they did five years ago. So the ability to collaborate and work together is, a co is really core to being productive. We know information work overload is a key thing, and that the most scarce, uh, that our attention is one of the most scarce resources. But did you know that it costs the US almost a trillion dollars each year based on this information overload? And of course, security threats are very top of mind. With the average attack comp compromising a system for over 229 days, before being detected. So at Microsoft, we know that providing an environment in which your employees can be their most productive while remaining secure is critical. Windows 10 Enterprise, Office 365, and Enterprise Mobility Plus Security were engineered together so that you have the capabilities you need to enable a secure, productive enterprise. With these solutions, you and your users can get more done without any compromise on security. A core to this offer is Windows 10 Enterprise. Windows 10 is the most secure Windows ever built. The new features with Windows Device Guard and Windows Information Protection bring an even more secure experience to Windows users. This provides the best platform for getting things done for IT and the business, but includes features that end users love, like Inc. and Cortana. And of course, the management capabilities that are essential for IT. We've also worked with our ecosystem to deliver innovative first and third party devices which provide new ways to create, to collaborate, and visualize. Office 365 empowers your employees to be more productive and, and is used by over 80% of Fortune 500 companies. Office 365 offers an incredible broad and deep set of workloads from enterprise class email to collaborative authoring and sharing, real-time voice and video, to business intelligence and analytics. And we recently welcomed Microsoft Teams to our Office 365 collaboration portfolio. It gives teams easy access to the information they need in a dedicated hub for teamwork. Here, people find team chat, content, people, and tools living together all in Office 365. 
And of course, all of these applications are built on a highly secure, manageable, and extensive service platform. We have over 85 million people using Office 365 at work every single month. And we, always, and we continue to exceed our financially backed 99.9% .9 SLA. Microsoft Enterprise Mobility plus Security protects across four critical layers, the user, devices, apps, and data. No other vendor delivers as comprehensive an offer. With capabilities like single sign-on, with conditional access and identity access management, combined with the addition of new features like Azure Information Protection, which provides the ability to automatically classify and encrypt files and data, and advanced threat analytics, which gives you insights on malware campaigns that, are take, that may be taking place across your organization. We continuously update and improve our cloud services so that you can stay ahead of cyber threats. So now I'd like to welcome Ben, who's going to take you through some of these new capabilities. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Catherine. So, uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of time now to show you how we can make you, more, make you and your users more productive no matter where they are. And I'm going to start on the key device that we all carry with us every day, which is our phone. Now, on the phone, I'm going to start in the Outlook application, which was heralded as the number one mail application, no matter what platform your mail happens to be hosted on. And that's because of key features like the focused inbox that takes the signals on the mail that I read and the things that I respond to a little slower and brings the most important messages to the top of my inbox for me. Also because of things like swipe gestures that allow me to quickly triage my email and make my way through that in an easy to do fashion with one hand. We also have things like an integrated calendar and file storage making it simple to access everything I need for my email in one location. But of course email is the key place where we get that information overload that Catherine mentioned earlier. And so we've made it even easier for people to have a secure and quick experience when working with mail. You can see here, for example, I have an email from Pavel. And this email has been sent with some sensitive information, and it's been given a, a rights-protected message. And so you can see here that as I get that message, I can see all of the information and the permissions I have and what I'm allowed to do with that message right here on my device. It's easier to process those mails we get, things like travel that have a lot of deep detail uh, buried down in the message. I have here uh, an email from Concur, which is our booking system we use at Microsoft. And this here contains all of my flight details for this trip from Seattle to Mexico. Now, normally I'd have to bury down into that email to find out where my flights were going and what was happening. But Outlook's intelligently looked at that message, and it's taken all of that key information and made it available to me in a form of action cards at the top of my email. So I can see here, the exact way that my flights are routed, where I'm leaving from and going to. I can also see when my flights from Mexico are going back to Seattle and fire off actions like checking in directly at the Delta website right here from my device. So allowing me to take actions on my email quicker and easier than I ever have before. Now one of the other big challenges when we're working with email on the go is how do I schedule meetings and how do I work with my calendar when I'm out on the road? And so if I move back over to my calendar here, you'll notice, first of all, we assign all of our meetings now an icon when we can tell what the meeting's about. So I now have an at-a-glance view of my agenda and what's coming up. And so I know exactly from those icons what to expect and what's happening. But like I said, one of the big challenges is how do I do things like schedule meetings? And so I'm going to go and create a new appointment. And in this case, I want to set up a coffee chat with Pavel. Now you'll notice as I type in coffee, Outlook automatically assigns that icon for me so I know what I'll be doing later on in the day. And I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to add Pavel in as one of my attendees. And now as I come through to go and schedule that meeting, I'm simply going to click on the time. And you'll notice as I go and do that, we actually go and check availability for Pavel and myself. And so to find a time that suits both of us, all I have to do is pick up that appointment and slide through my day until it turns green. The moment that turns green, and yeah, feel free to clap. <laughs> the moment that turns green is, uh, is when I know that we're both available to have that meeting. And so I no longer have to do that email tag back and forward to find out when Pavel's free to do that. So really useful ways for me to be able to work on the go. Now, Catherine also mentioned earlier, we welcome Microsoft Teams into the, into the collaboration portfolio for Office. 
And with Teams, this new uh, chat-based collaboration experience, we not only released uh, a web-based and app-based experience on Windows and Mac, we also have apps that are available across all of our mobile platforms, including iOS, Android, and Windows, which means I can stay connected with my Teams and what I'm working on no matter where I am. This is the Microsoft Teams application on iOS. Across the bottom, I have access to alerts, which let me know where I've been mentioned in a conversation or a thread. I have my chats, where I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with, you know, with one other person or a group of people where we're having a private conversation. And of course, I also have access to my Teams, where I can see all of the Teams that I'm working on and all of those conversation threads and what's happening in there as part of that. And when I drill into those conversations, I can then also see not just the conversation, but the shared content and files that we're working on as well, all right here from my mobile device. Now, when we think about mobility within Microsoft, it's not just about being mobile on the device. It's also ensuring that those experiences follow me when I move from my phone to my PC to my tablet. So as I switch over to my PC here, this is the Microsoft Teams application running on my Windows PC. You'll notice a similar experience, but scaled up for a full screen view. On the left-hand rail here, I can see all of those same navigation controls that I saw within the mobile device. My activities, my chats, my teams. With integration into Skype, I also have access to all of my meetings as well. And as I scroll through my conversations, I can see that all of those conversations are threaded. So as people are responding to conversations, they're grouped together, allowing me to collaborate easier. You'll also notice we have support for GIFs and animations in there as well. For there are times when just words aren't enough to get my uh, expressions across, and so I can really, truly express myself. In addition to that, we have an app bar at the top that allows me to pin key information into my channel or my group that I'm working on, uh, that making it easy for people to everyone to work on the same thing. Now, it's not just um, applications and files that I can pin here from Microsoft, but I can also pin third-party applications as well. And in this case, we have Zendesk, which is taking a little while to load. Um, but Zendesk, which allows me to run a ticketing system via a third party. And this allows us to extend the experience, not just from 365, but also to third-party integrations as well, giving me a really rich group team experience. Now, before I move away from Teams, Sometimes there are uh, moments when we have to have people get together on a video call. Skype for Business is integrated directly into the Teams experience. And you can see down here I have a group of people who are having a meetup, an impromptu meeting where they're meeting face to face via a video call. I can go and join that meetup and very quickly have that connect. And again, hopefully our network will hold up as part of this. Have that load in. We can see there Kim's joined me in that meetup, as has Nate. And that, um, uh, video feed will actually scale up as we're going as well, and they'll be able to see me and hear what I'm doing as well. So really rich experiences for me to be able to work together in teams and bring people together. Hey, guys. But let's change gears a little bit and look at some of the core authoring applications and what we're doing to help you create better content. I'm going to open up Excel here, and I have something, uh, I have a, a set of Excel data that's given feedback on a product we, we launched. And this feedback came through a Facebook group, and all of that feedback is text-based feedback. We can see here I have comments on the product that we launched, things like great, it's perfect, easy but not so good. And I actually have 1,600 rows of data in here. Now what I want to do is take that data, I want to be able to graph it and chart it and make it look brilliant. But to do that um, with just text-based sentiment is actually really difficult. With the new Azure machine, uh, Azure machine Learning Text Sentiment Analysis tool, I can take that information, run that through a machine learning algorithm in the cloud, and actually have a text sentiment and score return right here in Excel. So with a click of a button, I've had those 1,600 rows processed, and I have a sentiment analysis of positive, negative, and neutral, and a confidence score that goes along with that, allowing me to take that text-based data and now put that into a form that I can now graph that and chart that and make that look amazing. We've also continued to build in intelligence into other applications as well, particularly PowerPoint. When we think about slides and how do I get started, sometimes it's really difficult to kickstart my creative process. But with PowerPoint Quick Starter, it's even easier for me to get going. This uses the power of the cloud, and I'm going to build a, uh, a new move that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to build a new presentation on electric cars. And what this does is uses the Bing knowledge graph to go out and find information on electric cars for me. It gives me uh, different sections that I can use to build my presentation. And then go ahead and hit Next. And then it will give me a, a theme to be able to pick for that as well. 
And once I go and select that and hit create, Outlook will now use the big knowledge graph to go and build a presentation for me, a full presentation outline from scratch. And you can see here, with a couple of clicks, I've gone from having nothing to a full presentation ready to go. And it's given me all of the talking points and areas to start and build out my content quickly and easily without me having to go and start that uh, from scratch. So really, really useful tools that are bringing my collaboration together, helping me to bring my team together and build better content easier. And so with that, I'd like to hand back to Catherine. Thank you. Really exciting to see all these new capabilities that are coming um, out of Windows 10, Office, and EMS. Um, and these capabilities are already driving transformation with our customers. Here are just a few examples, and I'll just touch on one. Cushman and Wakefield is a commercial real estate company. They have grown, um, they've actually doubled in size in the last 18 months, and they do this really through acquisitions. And Office 365 has allowed them to bring companies together approximately 30% more quickly. So that is a truly ex amazing example of how really using Office 365 enables this digital transformation. But digital transformation is more than just technology. You are at the center of these changes. And change can be challenging, but it's critical that you build new skills. And our mission, as I shared at the start of the presentation, is to help every organization and individual to achieve more. We can only meet our goals if you are successful using our products and services to meet your business and your personal goals. We are investing in your success by delivering programs and training to help you learn about these new technologies to help you build your career, and at the same time, help your businesses by get, getting up and running quickly. Resources like MSDN and the IT Pro Career Center help you learn and build new skills. Events like today do the same. Programs like Fast Track give your companies the tools they need to get up and running quickly. And Microsoft Mechanics and the Microsoft tech community help you stay up to speed and stay connected. So make sure you're taking advantage of all these great resources, because everything that we do is really about your success. So now I want to share a video that examines the journey of five IT pros around the globe as they've transformed and adopted the cloud. Please roll the video. In the beginning, I was a total skeptic. I was like, why would you want to put your data somewhere else? Before the cloud, some of my peers were reluctant. Is it something that can work for, for me personally, but also for the, the clients I'm advising? IT professionals are always seen as the people who spend money but don't bring any value. And then that kind of changed when the cloud and the evolution of the cloud came into being we're able to be more responsive as a whole. It's helping IT so we can take on other projects. Before the cloud, I was just trying to keep up with the maintenance of day to day. But now I'm free to come up with creative ideas. You know, how can our marketing team do more and do it from home and do it from Singapore or China? When you're innovating, you don't want to have barriers. Things have gotten a lot smoother. Less security to worry about, less bandwidth issues. With cloud, you can add on as you go along. No need to invest in hardware. I see my whole infrastructure remotely on one device, one machine. I can bring up my console and with a few clicks of a button, get a site up and running and then just reach out to the customer and say, hey, can you see it? If I were to get advice, I would say be open to cloud. My company now feels me as a more valued member of the team, coming up with new ideas, innovative ideas. You will see yourself growing tremendously. As important as you are, you could be so much more. Learn as much as you can, expose yourself to what available options you have and take advantage of them. So these are truly times of change. And by being here, you are ahead of your peers in capturing these new opportunities. While you are here, take full adva advantage of the event. Connect with your peers. Learn as much as you can. The future truly belongs to you. We are really excited at Microsoft 
to do whatever we can to help you achieve and exceed your goals. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time and have a great two days. Thank you.